Good afternoon and welcome to another Total Education Lecture. This lecture is on the themes in Hamlet. My name is Bruce Pattinson and Total Education Centre presented today and I'm talking to you about the themes in Hamlet. Now the themes in Hamlet are sort of many and varied but I think they're quite important in the fact that you need to work out what the values are from the themes in the text. The themes aren't the only thing that convey the values but they're one of the main things and I think you can integrate the themes into the work we've already done. If you think back, the first lecture we covered, we looked at the revenge and the nature of revenge, and we put the, the play Hamlet in context. In our second lecture, we looked very carefully and clearly at the idea of his procrastination or, or delay or Hamlet, that, that sort of thematic concern. I'd like today to make this one hopefully a little bit shorter and generally work out what are the themes what you need to talk about when you talk about Hamlet. When we talk about Hamlet and the themes, there are just so many themes and ideas, but I think what you need to do is think of it in the context of our last lecture where we spoke about Hamlet as, as not being necessarily external but an internal thing and work it from there. Now, I'd like to say right from the very start that when we look at Hamlet, it's not necessarily just about Hamlet. You can't look at Hamlet in isolation. You need to bring Hamlet back into the context of the play. And I think what some students do is look at Hamlet as an individual and, and say the play is Hamlet. But there's more to the play than just that character. And you need to think about some of the bigger ideas and bigger pictures that Hamlet's about. And one, of the, one of the backups from this would be in Bradley's comment where he says, um, and this is the reason why in the great ideal movement which began towards the close of the 18th century. This tragedy acquired a position unique among Shakespeare's dramas. It was not that Hamlet is Shakespeare's greatest tragedy or most perfect work of art. It was that Hamlet most brings home to us at once the sense of the soul's infinity and the sense of doom which not only circumscribes that infinity but appears to be its offspring. And that's what I was talking to you about last lecture in many ways that Hamlet himself it is a character that just allows those themes to come out. He allows the ideas to, to be produced and they all link back to him. But they're also part of the play, they're also that context. And more clearly what you need to do is probably think about what not you're going to talk about. In When I was researching this lecture, the list of themes were, were quite extensive. And, and just let me go through some of them for you. Um, what I would do is not list themes obviously like this, what I would do is look at two or three themes and obviously the first two, the revenge and the idea of his procrastination are very important and you talk about those but I think what these themes I'm talking about today offer is a little bit more than that and bring into play some of the other features of the, con of the text. So what can it be about? And I've got a list here, a huge list, and I'd like you to just listen to think about this list, and I'll probably put it at the end of the lecture and write it out for you, so no need to make notes here. But just some of the ideas that critics have talked about, people have talked about, notes have talked about, all those things and ideas that, that I want to talk about today. And obviously we can get through these, but you can group them, or I'll just leave out the ones that you think aren't significant. So let's start by having a look at this huge list. You could talk about religious belief and spirituality, you can talk about families, you can talk about individuals, you can talk about love, death, power, corruption. You can talk about violence and gender, relationships, the appearance versus reality. You can talk about nobility and evil and authority. And, and all those sorts of issues, the idea of the restoration of order, which I talked about a little bit in that first lecture. And you can also talk about sin and death. There are really literally probably 50 ideas or themes that critics have talked about and there are only a touch of them. And what I'd like to do is read to you now just a general overview of, of what um, one critic has written and thinks about the idea of these things. He says, um, you can't overstate the importance of Hamlet, Hamlet himself and detaching him from the total dramatic pattern. And instead, you know, critics have concentrated on the way that Shakespeare explores certain themes, doubt, death, guilt, corruption, and the nature of man, by means of imagery and rhetorical devices. The idea that the play is a poem about life and death, which explores some of the most puzzling poems man had to face, 
is supported by the number of times characters utter questions about uh, which nobody answers or poses alternatives, which are pondered but not finally evaluated. The, the dilemma of the prince is, is, as I said at the end of the last lecture, the ability to, and what we would call probably, explore the fundamental human questions rather than some sort of psychological analysis. And that was the idea that I tried to get you to take away from that second lecture, was that it is, it's not about external forces, it's about it's about questioning where man is and the nature of man and humanity. And while that's a hugely extremely long list of, of themes and ideas, I think probably we can narrow that down and, and think about some of the ideas which are, are clearly discussed in different ways. If we look very carefully at the um, Royal Shakespeare Society site, they have several themes and ideas, and can I recommend this site to you? It's um, rsc.org.uk and if you go to that site what they have there is a list of the, the four themes that they think are the most important themes and having produced and you know, performed the play many, many times I assume that these are what they worked on. The themes that the Royal Shakespeare Society considers to be the most important are moral corruption, revenge, appearance and reality and mortality. And if you go to that website what they do here is they list under, say for example, if you click on uh, moral corruption, what you find is that they, they define that for you by saying moral corruption, the consequence of dysfunction of family and state. So they link lots of ideas together under that big broad umbrella. And I think that's probably a good thing for you to do because obviously you don't have time in any sort of essay or any discussion to think about hundreds of things and you need to group those things and have very specific examples then what they do under that heading for you is they go down and they supply a list of scenes and acts where that comes through in the play and give you a brief rundown. So for example, in Moral Corruption, we can see in Act 3, Scene 4, Hamlet confronts his mother with her disloyalty and mistakenly kills Polonius. And then they give you a little bit of feedback on that. And they do that for each of those four themes that I mentioned. And I think probably that that's one of the best ways to approach it. So if you started with basically by narrowing it down to those four themes, you would do very well and you'd think, um, be able to think very clearly about how important that is. So how do we approach them? Well, I would approach it in that order. I mean, obviously, if you were focused on particular ideas and particular values you wanted to promote when you discuss the play, you look at very specific things and you could talk about, again, with the idea of revenge and the idea of how he fails to sort of impact that revenge until the end of the play. You can talk about how important it was, say, for the restoration of order. And in Shakespearean times where you get that restoration of order where things come back to, well, in inverted commas, I would suggest normal. And you can work through that way. Sin and death also, as I mentioned, combine a lot of great ideas. But if you think about it, the idea of death and, and the, the supernatural, for example, will come through shining in the play. And we need to remember that I think eight of the nine major characters in the play all die. And I think that's significant when we talk about death and the idea of supernatural. And that was very um, important to that audience that, that while all that death occurs at the end, Fortinbras comes through and there's some restoration of that order and in that thematic sense that the world will be all right again and everything will be okay. I think also that when we see that restoration of order, it's, it's in all, all, a lot of the thematic concerns go away when Fortinbras finishes it. The idea of the supernatural is gone, the idea of revenge is gone. All those sorts of issues and, and ideas that have come up through the play have been put aside or resolved by death um, and that's very important towards the end of that play. The, the main concept that we need to think about when we talk about those thematic concerns, and that's an idea that you'll need to think about, is what Shakespeare is trying to say when he conveys those thematic concerns. So for example, if we look very carefully at the ghost, um, and we look at the supernatural element, which really drives a lot of the action of the play, and I'll, I'll talk about the ghost in greater detail in another lecture, but I'll touch on it here because it does certainly go back. At the start of the play we see the ghost, uh, Hamlet's father, and what he does is he, he sort of drives the action in many ways, but 
because it's supernatural in Shakespeare's time, it was a very sort of edgy topic to play with, um, unlike these days when we sort of accept all those supernatural things because we see it so much. What we've got is that they don't believe that it is Hamlet's father. And it takes a long time for that play and Hamlet finally talks to his father and follows him and he says, revenge me, revenge me. And you think at that point that Hamlet's going to go directly out and move forward and attack and, and do all the things, that the revenge that we would expect. And it doesn't happen. And again, the ghost is questioned and he comes back into it time and time again. Now you need to think for yourself, what is Shakespeare trying to say in all that? What is he trying to do? What is the idea of the supernatural? Is part of that the delay that caused the is cause of the delay? Is it another reason? And those are things that you need to decide for yourself. There's been plenty written on ghosts, and if you type in Hamlet's father, the ghost, whatever you like to call it, into the internet, you'll find a lot of sites that talk about the impact of that and what effect it has on Hamlet and how that's supernatural and how all the death keeps imposing on it. You might also like to think about the idea of death as it comes through and how it affects that idea of revenge affects everybody in the whole play. That corrosive idea of that initial sin. And if we look at um, the, the killing of Hamlet's father, the poisoning, that, that initial sin and, and the repercussions of that throughout and that lack of moral character and moral fibre and what happens to all the characters because of that is a very, very important thing. I think also that you need to look at um, the idea of, of what values does that show and what is, what is Shakespeare saying by saying that that corrupting power has all these consequences until everything is rightfully restored at the end by a character, by a different character. And we see also that you need to think about how these ideas and themes impact on Hamlet as a character. The initial contact with the supernatural, for example, enables him and forces him to work um, on revenge, which he's really not sure about. And there's no physical reason why he can't do it. It's more a moral dilemma and a dilemma that impacts on a lot more things than just himself purely because of his position and important position in society. So that's a very brief rundown now on themes. And I'd like you to think about just some of the issues that I've brought up. I mean, obviously, the, the idea of themes, you could talk for 15 minutes on each of them, and we don't have time to do that in these brief lectures. But have a think about some of those things I've brought up. Think about the values that are portrayed. And if you have any questions, certainly don't forget, you can tap us a line. Um, give us a like down below. I'm Bruce Pattinson from the Total Education Centre. Thank you very much for your attention today. If you certainly have any queries or you need extra help, go to our website, totaleducationcentre.com.au. There you'll find an extensive lecture on Hamlet by a European correspondent, Lewis Mitchell. That will be very helpful for you and assist you in your studies. And certainly don't forget, if you have any questions, don't forget, send us a line through the, through the um, YouTube channel here and we'll endeavour to answer all your questions. Thank you very much for your time. Bye-bye.